Esterine, you are over in Florence where you just finished a consultation on CADEP that brought together the issues of gender and climate change. Why do you think we need another nexus discussion? What is the added value of bringing these two issues together? It is critical that we look at that relationship between gender and climate change, particularly women and climate change in the context of Africa where um, women are the ones who are walking the land. You know, they are the ones producing the food. We know by various reports that about 65 to 70% of smallholder farmers in the continent are women. And we also know that agricultural production in the continent is heavily impacted by climate change, climate variability, you know, issues of drought, floods, and all of that. So it just makes sense that those who are working the land and who are impacted on the land, that makes this be discussed fully because it has not been given sufficient attention and to see now we know this is happening, what kind of actions and solutions can we bring to help um, mitigate, reduce the impact that climate change is having on the um, agricultural activities of women smallholder farmers. When you think of gender and climate change in the context of CADEP in Africa, you also think of different ministries that deal with these issues. Some are more progressive, others are less. How do you bring the different ministries to actually work together? You are absolutely correct, you know. Um, 10 years of CADAP, when we did two years of consultation before we went to Malabo to have the Malabo decision on CADAP for the next 10 years, one of the key issues that came out was the issue of interministerial coordination and the need to have a multi-sectoral approach, you know, to addressing the issue of agriculture. Um, and for this particular um, topic that we are discussing, women, climate change and agriculture, we have Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Environment, Minister of Women Affairs or Gender, as they are calling most ministries. What we are doing in this program to ensure coordination is to establish a platform that brings together these key ministries, but also the key stakeholders who are the women um, farmers as well as civil society. So we have the broader platform that brings all the stakeholders as the mechanism for planning, for reporting back on this program, and for accountability. So that the stakeholders will ask themselves the question, okay, on the issue of maybe um, land use, sustainable land management, which sometimes the Minister of Agri Environment will take the lead. What did you do? And the issue of providing inputs, fertilizers, and all of that to the women. What did the Minister of Agriculture do? On the issue of empowering and helping the women groups to form themselves into organized um, communities what I want to call them cooperative of something else, what did agriculture do and what did the Minister of Gender do? So that platform is a platform where they assign themselves their different roles. This mechanism that is structured at different levels, at the, cont at the national level where you have the ministry sitting in headquarters, at the level of the provinces and districts where you have their departments sitting together and jointly planning and agreeing on the activities and their respective roles in supporting these women, we think will really help because it's a problem. It has always been a problem and we need to try and make sure that it is addressed now that we are looking at um, a next generation um, of kind of implementation. I want to dig into that a little bit. We have a number of events like the partnership platform where all the relevant stakeholders are coming. However, it seems to me that the collaboration therefore doesn't necessarily take place. Is there a mechanism that could actually twist the arms a little bit to make the stakeholders work together more sufficiently? You know, Malabo is a, this came out and it's about action. 
right? We are looking at post-2015 Nigeria is about action. We are looking at 2015 year African Union year of women empowerment. It's about action. I think everyone from the political leadership, from the technical um, offices to the civil society people on the ground, all agree that now we have to move beyond talking, planning, and go into action. Because history will judge us. So we want that you are coming onto the platform because you have something to offer and you will be held responsible if you don't deliver and that of and that response holding responsible is not looking for outside that's to hold you responsible but we want active citizenship that whole our policy makers our technicians themselves accountable for what they've agreed to do um, to make sure that women and youth are empowered so that they can actively participate in the economic life of their countries. We have 10 years of CAREP now, and donors have been pushing the African partners for quite some time to sort out their roles and responsibilities. While there might be some issue with that, what is your message to the donors in terms of sorting out roles and responsibilities? You know, I have to say that, and appreciate that the last 10 years of CADAP um, we have really had good support of the partners um, behind CADAP, rallying behind him as the organizing framework to support agricultural development in the continent. But one other thing that you have, we have realized is that amongst the donors themselves, you know, they, uh, uh, they need to organize themselves. Um, they need to all come on the table um, with the view of supporting an African agenda. That should be the driving principle, supporting what Africa needs to do. And for that, then it shouldn't be, um, I am responsible for CADAP implementation and you are responsible for something else. For us as African and Af African institution, we think that it is important that the different donor coordinating mechanisms come together and speak with one voice and support the agenda that the continent says this is how and where we want to go.